Hey, good morning. This is Jared and Nate with eCarrier Check. We're uh, going live today, do some calls and uh, really just share our knowledge, try to help you grow as a, as a person, as a, as a freight broker, a carrier. Um, but thank you for joining us. I'm excited about today, Nate. Yes. Um, Nate, how's your week been? Tell me all about it. Oh, it's really, it's honestly been a really good week. Um, just lots of good questions. Honestly, I swear every, every, every week, just been good questions. Yeah. It's always just some newer broker or dispatcher coming to join our community, which I love. Mm. You know, we have so many people coming in. They're just new to the industry. So this is a great community to be in. Um, if you're just starting off so yeah it's great. give us an example you know you can always tell how engaged somebody is by the questions they're asking yeah right? it almost even feels like that with your life you know the standards mm -hmm. of questions you ask the better your life gets right? right but give us some questions that people are asking that are that are that are dynamite yeah that's a good one well coming from a carrier they're finding direct shippers you know how do mm -hmm. they connect with the shippers you know you're a carrier you know not a lot of the carriers make the calls right yeah so i think that was kind of one of the highlighted questions and then um actually a lady with dispatching yesterday as well you know she's trying to just she's new to the industry didn't have any kind of training so yeah. she's like how do i find carriers to dispatch for and how do i you know market to them yeah so that's really been some highlighted questions for this week anyways yeah absolutely yeah. you know we always talk every every week we talk about you know how do we get better mm -hmm. um you know, we're always driving to, to do little things in that regard. Uh, you know, what was one thing that you did this week that kind of just bettered yourself or that you felt like you're like, man, I learned that last week. I got to try it this week. Yeah, honestly, I'd have to be, and, and it's going to be sales. I watch a weird amount of sales on YouTube and TikTok. Yeah. And sales as in, you know, my the way I talk, what the words and how I say it. So, you know, thinking about just different ways to kind of connect with people. Mm. So it's really have to be in the sales world. Yeah, in my absolutely. I saw you send me a TikTok um, the last, last night, like ten thirty yeah, or something. Yeah. That guy's legit. I love yeah. that guy. He always talks about um, leaving voicemails. This mm -hmm. was the video, and he, you know, if we leave a voicemail that's just the same, hey, this is Jared. It, you know, you carry your check, or you know, hey, I've got something I need to tell you about. You know, this lane right now. Give me a call back. Yeah. You know? it really just spikes more interest, you know, getting a voicemail and a callback is important. Right. And so how do you, how do you drive, you know, how do you spike more interest, but don't sound like the guy trying to sell me, you know, auto right. insurance, right. right. You know, or the guy that has my social security number that leaves me 14 voicemails. Yeah. Today, <laughs> yeah. Right. Holy cow. I get a lot of that. I so think, I think the biggest thing for this guy that I was watching you know, on TikTok, you're just creative. Mm. And that's why a lot of the people I tell on our demos, which we have three <laughs> times a week, by the way, yep. is get creative. Just get creative. Um, there's always different ways to do things. And like you kind of say, you can be 10 degrees off. And that's yeah. so true. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, obviously the demos are just show off our technology and, and what right. we've got going on. Um, we're a sourcing platform that essentially, uh, uh, you know, helps people find the next relationship. You know, we yeah. talk about we're one relationship away from growing our business, our personal life, things like that, and changing mm -hmm. our life, right? Um, but, you know, Wednesday is one of my favorite days. It's our Q&A. We get, we get a, a really intimate crowd, mm -hmm. um, and we're able to kind of just talk turkey and, and talk. Yeah. You know, this Wednesday was really unique. We had a guy that came in and said, hey, you know, I've got, uh, I've got you know, a load from, you know, L.A. to, to somewhere over in, you know, Arizona and, He's like, let's call some RGN. So we called some people and it was just awesome. So uh, Tired Killer's asking, how can you trust the brokers when a load is supposed to for 500, but when it gets down to the wire, then all of a sudden there's a thousand in it. Yeah. You know, Brian, this is such an interesting question. And I've been in both seats. I've been in your chair where I'm trying to dispatch the trucks. I've also been on the broker side where you're trying to make the most amount of friggin' uh, money and also get it moved for your client. And it's tough, right? You know, I if you're living on the load boards and you're and this is what you're talking about is the load boards you know if you're living on the load boards and you know you come two three hours later and that's the load you know it just kind of teaches you that i really think that it's important that you're not being so dependent on them i think the load boards have to be third choice you know and and in fact that's what we're talking about today is, is sales and, and that aspect how do you trust it I, honestly, it's really going to be more of a transactional at that point. You know what I mean, Brian? It really is going to come down to, you know, the, the question of, you know, 
all right, I, I need to just get this transaction done. Let's go move it from point A to point B. And, you know, in, in my mind, you've got to, you've got to use those relationships when they're needed. Uh, but the hope is, is that you can be somewhat proactive and find the brokers that you really do want to work with that are willing to pay you what's worth it. Um, that broker is definitely probably looking for a transaction. You know, I hate to say that. Um, this was kind of interesting, but uh, Kalee says I had a driver who was stuck at the way station because his IRP was expired and received a $2,000 fine. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a different level. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's truly, that's a, whew, I don't know what you did about that, but you might, you might talk it, throw it in the comments of what you actually did to handle that situation. There is nothing worse. In fact, I was at a brokerage late earlier this week and they loaded out a truck with, uh, you know, I'm in Nebraska, so <laughs> the round bales of hay, right? And the weight was fine, but he was overweight on on uh, the back axles. Mm. And he ended up having to take off, you know, they wouldn't let him leave the scale, you know, there at middle of friggin' DOT land in uh, middle of Nebraska. And they wouldn't leave him, let him leave the scale. And what was probably one of the more interesting things with this one is how creative the broker got you know, I'm sitting there watching this happen and the carrier's like, well, I can't leave. What am I supposed to do? So we, he called the shipper, he called the receiver, um, and communicated the situation, which is perfect. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta over communicate. And then Josh was like, you know, I bet there's a feed yard or a sale barn or something right here. I'm going to call and see if they'll just buy a, a round bale off us. Yeah. So sure enough, first place he went to first place, they, yeah, they'll all take it. Wow. You know, did it cost him some cash? Absolutely. Was it a pain in the tail? Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, we're in solutions, right? right. We provide logistics. Got creative and we figured it out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is what I love about this industry. I love the creativity. Uh, I love, you know, the ability to just find a solution and nobody told him how to do that. Right. He just was like, Hey, I, I gotta get this bail off. It almost comes down to, you know, I'll give you an example of this is, Where's your mindset at? Mm. And I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. If you were at a conference, you're away from home, or you know Brian's on the road, right? Mm -hmm. And he gets a call, and and the call is is not good, right? It's one of those things where it's like, hey, you know, your grandkid just died, or your wife is in the hospital. Right. Your mindset goes to, I've got to get home now. Right. There is no other option. Nothing is going to stop you. You are in that, I hate to say it any other way, but you're in a desperate mindset. Right. Well, that freight broker needed to get the load moved. Mm -hmm. Needed to get that hate of them cattle. They got to eat, right? right? So, it, you know, when you have the right mindset, it's kind of like it's all or nothing. Right. The boats are burned. I've got to figure out a way. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get backed into a corner, you get creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have to agree with that. You think about the things that happen in your in your life, not just this industry, but you think of hard situations you've gone through. How did you get through that? I think if you could think of those moments and take it, you know, take a step back and think about it, mm. and then take it to your your work. You know, you can get through that. Get through those tough um, situations or those environments. So absolutely, really cool that the broker got through that. Yeah, Robert says, and I, I really appreciate this, Robert. Yeah, you know, he's a broker dispatcher. Facebook and LinkedIn groups are a good place to find brokers. I, there is nothing better than the world we live in today where we can network from our computer, from our chair, from our living room, from an office. You can network and build truly some of the most, uh, you know, amazing relationships that that I've actually ever had. Some of those people I didn't meet for a couple of years. Right. <laughs> it was through COVID or something to that extent. It was very entertaining. Um, I know we're going to get into some calls here in just a sec. We're having some chat and I love that. Uh, Kalise said she had to go to the website, enter all the exact mileages, pay 1800 and back to the scale station. Oh my gosh. Wow. $3,800. The driver paid lost major profit. Oh, wow. Yeah, boy, this is a, you know, I hate to say this and this is something that, you know, just happens. I've, I've lost a lot of money in my day as a broker, but I've also made a lot of money. But when I did lose money, you know, I learned from it. Just, yeah, right? you learn. You know, so anytime you're in those situations, um, 
I, you know, Khalees, I know it's a rough week. You probably just need to just get a glass of wine and yeah. and forget about for freight for a minute. And then that's important. Yeah. You know, you got to find a way to refill your cup um, because it's there. You're, you'll probably ask those questions differently next time you book a truck. Um, sorry that this happened. I really do. Yeah. Tire killer. I need a network exec on my team. Um, I, boy, I tell you what that isn't that the truth we all could just use a little bit more hey something that i do really recommend when it comes to time management yeah. and they you see me get pulled around a lot of different ways um obviously i help a lot of different companies a lot of different people right. and if you don't time block if you don't send yourself those reminders uh via text or mm -hmm. via your computer now brian is in the truck you know you've got whew, you know you're driving You've got a 30 minute break. And then by the time you're done driving, you're probably pretty spent. You want to just kind of either walk around your truck or walk at the truck stop or put your feet up or catch a shower. Maybe, maybe park in the back of Walmart and go walk around or something. But uh, man, I tell you what, it, it can be mentally draining, you know, being in the truck like that. And I totally get that. But at the same time, maybe there's 30 minutes in there somewhere where you can just say, I'm going to make two phone calls today and try to build up some of that and so i get it i get you need a network exact brian Woo, i get it some days at the end of the day i feel like tom cruise you know, yeah, right, cocktails yeah. i'm just ringing out my socks <laughs> um but let's talk about cold calls today so here's here's where we're at i'm excited about this um i'm going to be doing calls for that same carrier that i was working for last week if you guys watched um a small flatbed carrier they're out of the out of nebraska that's where i'm out of um Love Nebraska. In fact, we got Nebraska football coming up in two weeks. I'm pretty jacked about yes, that. Um, but, you know, he's a flatbed carrier. Incredible knowledge. All these guys, all these carrier or all the drivers have good experience. They all can tarp, um, you know, but he runs his own triangle. He runs his own network. He really is stuck on kind of Western Nebraska ish into Colorado, right? Denver in that area because we're only a couple hundred miles away from Denver. Then he likes to get into Salt Lake. He likes to get into Billings and whatever combination of those three things, sometimes he'll get over to Rapid City sometimes um, and then come down. But whatever those combinations in that little area of the country, that's really what he's all about. How can I find more of that? You know, Brian mentions in here and this is something that he's dealing with. So we're not we're, you're not alone, Brian. You know, he'll be he, his goal is to. You know, in each of those locations I just mentioned, right, his goal is to get five direct shippers, five direct brokers, and then use the board if all else fails, right? It's just a tool that will help him get there. It's a crutch. He, he would rather not have that crutch, but sometimes you have to have it. And it sounds like he's really good with planning ahead, too. Like, it's almost like he looks into what's up for next week but he's yeah. still worried about what's going on today boy that's a good observation Planning, yeah. you know any way of being proactive versus reactive so so what i do for him is i help him with uh some calls uh, i help him try to find some of those network po components i try to try to yeah. stay in the midwest the, be the best i can god it's the truth you know he'll get into situations where you know he'll get into billings and he'll call one of his direct shippers and they're like hey i've got to load down to tulsa you know, would you take this? I'll pay you a little extra more, you know? And then, you know, he always feels like he's, I don't know if Brian, you can relate to this, but he always feels like kind of just, he's trying to help people out. Yeah. He has that mindset of, I'm going to just help him out. I'll take this load of Tulsa. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to get when I'm getting there, but at least like you said, he's proactive. He'll probably get the opportunity. And before he says yes, he'll ask himself three questions, mm -hmm. you know, a, What's my time frame to get down there? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Obligated. That's you hit it on the head, Brian. But he'll say, he'll say, you know, hey, if I take this load to Tulsa, what's my time frame? You know, now I just went from Billings to Tulsa, which is what, 900 miles, something mm -hmm. like that. You know, now we're a day and a half run instead of just a day run, right? right? You know, where am I at in the week? You know, am I on Friday or for Thursday or is the receiver open on Monday or over the weekends, right? right. So we start asking ourselves all these questions. But then the big question is, is what are you going to load when you get down there? Right. And can you get back into your triangle? Mm -hmm. You know, Brian says, I try to stay in the Midwest as best as I can. How do you get back in your network? Right. 
So, you know, TA Freight Dispatch just says, how can you explain to your driver to stop comparing themselves to other trucking truck drivers mm. when it comes to how much they get a mile? Boy, isn't that the question of the day? You know, great this is question. a great question. Um, I'm not sure how to put it up. I might have to give you the remote here. I'm sorry. I, 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 I try. This is such a good question. You know, I think there's so many comparisons that happen because what ends up happening is these drivers end up getting into truck stops and they almost gab like it's a hair salon. Yeah. That's yeah. I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they it. just, they get into these, I have two at the local truck stop, which mm. I think we may try to go do a live at the local truck stop. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But you know they get in they start talking well i got paid 225 a mile right or i got paid 350 into here you know everybody is comparing themselves you know to each other's journey mm -hmm. and that's just a terrible way to live your life anyway you're comparing your journey um you're in your own journey the big thing for me you know ta freight dispatching is you know at the end of the day his goal is to get some sort of level of profit margin, right? You're dispatching these trucks. They want to get, they want, they want to see at the end of the month or at the end of the year, end of the quarter that I want to live in the, I want to make 15%, you know, or 85 OR, right? I want to, I want to have that operating ratio. I want to make at least this much money, right? So what I always did when I was in dispatch, you know, you're sitting there going, okay, I know my costs you know, some of these loads that I'm going to take are maybe going to be higher than what I was thinking as far as profit margin. Some of these loads may be a little bit lower, but in my mind, what I would suggest I would tell him is, you know, let's, let's collectively look at all these loads after, after the long run, right? After, you know, after a month, if you, I know you're looking at one load, right? That I believe me, I promise you, they're all going to get into this situation where they all compare themselves but it's all about let's look long term let's look 30 days from now let's look a week from now did we make the or that we wanted right you should be able to look at expenses deadhead miles insurance you know percentages factoring percentages right you should be able to put all these things into a cost sheet and add value especially if you're a dispatcher you know why not add value to your carrier and let them know here's your costs here's how much you know my costs are um, and really give them that understanding because so many carriers, um, you know, I'd be interested, Brian. Yeah, I know Brian is fairly um, robust with this. But Brian, when did you start learning, you know, your costs? Was it right away? Was it, you know, a little while down the road? You know, he, he's a good driver. He's in the area, right? So I really think it's important that you help them educate their costs. And then from there, you've got to just explain, hey, you know, I understand you saw some rates or heard about rates that were actually out there. What I'd like to do is at least, you know, we have a goal together. You know, you want to make a, a 15 percent OR or 85 OR, whatever, however you guys, you know, you want to make at least a thousand bucks a week. However, you're trying to that terminology for you. You got to let them know comparing yourself to others. There could be so many other factors involved. Was it expedited? Was it, you know, did it did the shipper, you know, have to have somebody uh, is the receiver easier to work with? Is there no tarping? You know, there's so many factors that go into a load that you just I, really the, the the spot market's a spot market unless you catch the right opportunities, right? When there's desperation, yeah. you get paid more. But those opportunities aren't always there. Yeah, and a little side note too, like you talk about knowing your costs or understanding your costs. If you don't know, you know how to figure that out, um, you know, do some research. Um, I actually was on a class with Shaggy at Shaggy Consulting, and oh man, I, I got to sit in on a class with some carriers and dispatchers, and he talked about how to know your costs, and we went through everything. And I was like, goodness, it does take some time to really figure out your costs and how it, you know, how it works. So it is important to do that. And if you ever need some extra training, check out Shaggy; he's insane. Oh yeah, he will really help you. Yeah, yeah, he's worth the time. Yep. Yeah, it, Brian mentions he goes. It took a while to realize what my expenses were, and then he, yeah. you know, small things I wasn't thinking about that that really take the time. So Ti actually says, and I love this. One driver I I have stated he will not move his truck unless he gets three to three fifty a mile because that is what his cousin gets, and his cousin does not get it. He does not move his truck. So. You know that I I understand that guy comparing himself to that situation. I, you know, I think it all comes down to you. I don't know. This one's an interesting one mm -hmm. because 
if I take 350 a mile on a 200 mile haul, is that cool? Or if I take, you know, what's he trying to get accomplished here? And I get that he's trying to do three to 350. Well, then find him shorter hauls and, you know, just move on. <laughs> you know, the shorter hauls, you're going to get paid more, right? Um, where the longer hauls, you're going to get probably paid a little bit less, right? So definitely take, you know, take the time to really try to explain to him, you know, what's the distance, what's involved in that load. Um, I don't know if you're dispatching vans or, or flatbeds or, or hot shots, but I definitely, uh, not every load broker is the same. Absolutely. It's definitely unrealistic, especially in today's market on the spot market to try to get three, 350. Maybe you can, but it's definitely, you know, one of those things where, you know, I know, in fact, you know, it's funny is before I make these calls, I asked him, I said, where's your rate at? You know, how, what's your wholesale cost at? What are your costs at? Right. And what do you try to get? And, you know, he knew right away, yeah. you know, what his costs were. He knew right away. He goes, I'm 250 a mile right now. In fact, he actually told me 248. And I'm like, really? Like, you know, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll just take 250 and, and try to get you 275, three, you know, yeah. and go from there. Um, you know, with that, with that 500 mile haul, if he gets, you know, three bucks a mile, you got to figure he's going to be at that $1,500 mark. Um, and so that'll give you the ability to, to kind of keep that running. So, uh, what is the cost one guy might need? What was, what tire killer say? What is the cost? Uh, one guy might not cost the next guy. He can afford to run cheaper than the next guy. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? You know, I mean, if they compared everything, insurance, tires, factoring percentages, um, you know, deadhead miles, right? What, how many deadhead miles does he live in the same place that his cousin does? Right. I don't know. Right. right? So. Great questions. Holy, this yeah, is awesome. A lot going on. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So uh, today, here's what we're going to do. We're calling for uh, the local carrier here. Um, again, we're, you know, sitting in, um, he's really wanting to find some loads out of Denver that can get him back into Nebraska. His cousin has been trucking for five years, so I explained to him that his cousin is in a different lane. Trucking four months. He cannot compare himself to his cousin. Yeah. I mean, I know it may be an uphill battle, but that's exactly... You know, that's the battle you're going to fight until you prove to him what his costs are. And then you show him that you can get him, you know, you can meet the profit level that he's trying to get accomplished. They're hot shots. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I would definitely just continue to push him and say, hey, you know, let's get going. Let's move your trucks. Let's try to get to the OR that you're wanting to get accomplished. And let's tweak every week and see what we did right and what we did wrong, you know. Heck, my truck gets 450, whereas the truck he might get, oh yeah, this is a miles mm. per gallon. But it, Brian, why is your truck only getting four, five, four and a half miles per gallon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge difference, though. He says, you know, his truck might get seven and a half. Yeah, when you're in the hotshot world, I mean, you know, those trucks, you know, you got to figure those are F550s pulling, yeah. pulling 40 foot goosenecks yeah. around. Uh, they should be getting, God, you'd think at least 10 to. 12 i'd be interested to hear what people are getting in miles per gallon i know when this particular gentleman uh that we're calling for today uh the, the going rate for a hot shot is 2 250 yeah it depends on the city you're in but yeah you know it depends on where you're out of if you're in denver it's probably it's probably a buck right maybe a buck and a half two somewhere in there but um you know it just depends on the city you're in so that would be the question you got to figure out what cities you're in and then back haul and that aspect um, so the guy we're calling for today is, you know, he knows his costs, gave me that there are 250 a mile. Uh, he's really stuck on finding, you know, loads in Salt Lake and Denver, uh, billings. And so what I want to do is we're going to call, we're going to call a couple people off of, yeah, West coast is, it can get kind of competitive out there. Uh, but we're going to call a couple people. One's in, we're going to call a freight broker. He's really trying to boost up how many freight brokers he has in Billings. So we're going to call one freight broker in Billings. And then there's two shippers in Denver that he's really trying to see, you know, do they have any freight that can come into Nebraska? He's really wanting to get really specific. I don't know what we're going to find. I guess maybe sometimes we're finding a needle in a haystack. Yep. But you know, let's see what we can find with those three people. So to give you a quick understanding of what I did or how I found them is I got on eCarrier check and I don't know if Nate, you can, you know, kind of flip it over into to e carrier check here. Um, but you know, the first thing I was able to do was come in and say, okay, I really need to find and start building up, you know, the brokers I'm working with. So 
what I did is I went into find by location. I did billings. I kept it fairly local. You know, I just need a few pages, right? And with our page, you know, as you're scrolling through, obviously we show every single freight broker that's out there. Um, you know, they're all out there, right? Oh, yeah. And some may be more active, some may not, mm -hmm. right? Depends on the situation. But what I really am looking for is a couple of things. If you don't see an email address, then I really am looking for um, something where we can actually, we got a truck pulling in here, so you might start hearing that truck, which is kind of funny. Um, but what I'm really looking for is just someone that, you know, essentially is, is got some kind of website. So, you know, if I push this button, it'll take them out and say, oh, there's Billings, you know, Montana Freight Agency. And, you know, hop on their website and see, you know, if I went to dad or truck, you know, truck stop, yeah. I can't say that I've seen these guys. Um, they've been around since 83, right? You can get a quote on their site if you're a shipper. If I want to come in and just see what our about us is, let's take a look. There's no substitutes. Uh, they do RGNs, double drops, deck decks, multi axle. Okay. So, you know what I mean? So this is the kind of guy that I want to see if he can help me, right. right? He does some TIA work. I love that. You know that he's a part of the industry. Uh, we always talk about getting involved in the industry. So I think that's really important. And, and so now from here, you know, let's just get in, get in touch. Um, you know, here's his physical, here's his office. So we're going to call them and just say, hey, you know, we're up in Billings, um, you know, three to four times a week with 48 foot flatbeds, four foot drops. And we're going to just see if we can actually get, you know, something to something that he may have yeah. up in that area back either down into Salt Lake, <clears throat> down into Denver or down back into Nebraska, yeah. or we could take something in South Dakota. Right. right. So that's our goal right now. Uh, Sorry if it's a little hard to hear as we got a yeah. truck out there. We got a truck out there just doing their thing. Get the so, door shut, yeah. so. Oh, just push that down. It should take it down. So. All right, so let's let's give them a call. Let's see how this call goes. But at least you can hear uh, what what the, what they're uh, what they're trying to accomplish. So four two four five four four six eight eight. All right, ready? Here we go. Just push the down button. Oh, I'll go down. Okay, yeah, fair enough. That's okay. Please listen carefully as our menu options have changed. Thank you for calling Freight Agency Incorporated, a transportation brokerage okay, company so located in Billings, Montana. Are you looking at All regular this as a carrier are broker? From 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. If you know the extension, you would Brian, like to Brian, I'm looking at this as a carrier because I'm representing this message, uh, Twin City Carters. Press 1 for the next available customer service representative. It's kind of fitting that there's a truck outside. Yeah. Agency, this is Carrie. Hey, Carrie, this is Jared Ross with Twin City Cartage. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm a flatbed carrier that gets up into Billings you know, two to three times a week. Um, you know, I really am a small carrier, but I, you know, I'm up there enough that I'm trying to find maybe a local broker to start working with instead of trying to find loads on load boards. You, okay. Would you have somebody I can talk to that maybe can tell me more about your brokerage or maybe... I'm really trying to stay in the Midwest, you know, Salt Lake, Denver, South Dakota, Nebraska, somewhere in there, maybe Wyoming. Okay, yeah. Um, let me get you over to Debbie. She does a lot of work on Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hey, Debbie, this is Jared Ross with Twin City Cartage. How are you? Good. Hey, Debbie, I'm trying to um, build up some local relationships with carry or with brokers, essentially, to move me back into the uh, Midwest. And, you know, I just wanted to see, you know, kind of what you guys do or if you had any flatbed loads that I can, you know, see if you know, they could be a fit between, you know, Billings and Salt Lake and Wyoming and Colorado, Nebraska. That's kind of where I'm trying to be in. Yeah, or go. You know, usually we're in Billings, so I'm trying to get into those five states or so. Um, I get back into Billings quite a bit, but usually I'm loaded, to be honest with you.
I'm a I'm a carrier out of Gary, Nebraska, Twin City Cartage. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have 48 flats. They're 102 wides. They got four foot drops. Um, you know, we aren't hazmat or tanker endorsed, but um, you know, we we've been around for a while, and you know, we say what we do, and we do what we say. Correct. Yeah, we don't have anything longer than that. Really? Yeah. Uh, you need six. Well, we can probably adjust to that. I mean, we've got we've got an office that keeps our six foot. So, I mean, if I knew that I needed six foots up there, I could keep. I could grab them. You know what I mean? Yeah. What What is wall? Like it's just like a like gypsum or something, or like a drywall. Yeah. What is it? Oh, it's she rock. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it just tarp and. So Salt Lake, Salt Lake, you're paying thirteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what about uh, down into Denver? You mentioned Colorado. Do you have anything into there? Well, I'm I'm usually I'm usually about three to five days ahead anyway. Um, okay. So I mean, it, I'm not looking for today anyway. I'm just thinking like for next week. Okay, that's fair. So you're more uh, yeah. of a couple days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, for the most part, you've got Salt Lake, and you're paying thirteen hundred, maybe fourteen. Yeah. You said occasionally. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, and I definitely don't know if I want to go that far into Nebraska. Not to get picky, we're just out of gearing. I don't know if you know where Scottsbluff gearing is. Yeah. yeah. So I'd rather right. just I'd rather take a load into Denver and Deadhead two hundred than you know go out to Kearney and have to come back. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is your number? Uh, zero five zero four five zero. Yeah, this, this is my cell. You can call me at 308-631-2543. Okay. And I can get you, like, I could send you, like, a setup packet and things like that. I'd have our dispatcher send that over to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Did I lose you? Did I lose you? And I'm sorry. Oh, no. So, your name is? My name is Jared Ross. Yeah. Okay. And what's what's a good email? Maybe I'll send you our setup packet. We can just start exchanging. Or how do you send out your loads currently? Do you send it out, you know, um, you know, do you send it out in a daily sort of email? Do you post them up? How do I find you? Um, usually, it's on email or internet sort of stuff. ITS. We okay. Send out. Okay. okay. Um, a good email. My email is Debbie, D-E-B-E-I-E, -E, and then H is in Henry, at freight-agency.com. Awesome. And Debbie, is this a good number to call you at, or do you have a direct extension? My, my direct line is... Three four one one. Okay. Three, four, yeah, that one. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, 
what I'll do is I'll send you our packet over and just maybe if, if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll just send you out. Hey, I'm going to be, or I'll have our dispatcher do it, Monty. He'll just let you know, hey, I'm going to be there two to three times a week on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, or you know what I mean? Um, okay. And if you can just keep us in mind for those lanes that make sense, you know, like I said, we're really trying to focus on Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska. So um, you might just let Monty know okay. where, where you need it. And then I can also let him know. Uh, to get six foot tarps or to load the six foot tarps because we already have them. It's just a matter of we usually just travel with fours. Um, do you have anything other than yeah, that that's not tarped? Say that again. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Do you have anything else that's in your in your neck of the woods that that makes sense? Yeah, North Dakota is a tough state. Say that again. Okay. All right. Sure, sure. Um, all right, Debbie. Well, I definitely will be in touch. Um, I'll have you. Uh, I'll send us over our, our carrier packet first. Um, you know, as far as your rates, you know, you're, you're fairly close to, to where I need to be in order to meet my costs. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Um, and you know, from there, we just need to, uh, you know, get set up and see if we can kind of hit some, some loads together here as uh, the next couple weeks come on. And so Sounds great. awesome, Debbie, thank you for your time. I appreciate the effort. Okay. You bet. Thank All right. You. Take care. That was a great call. Yeah. I thought it went well. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, I was looking up, you know, on the back end. I don't know if you guys could see that, but looking up the mileage radius, that's something I probably should have already have known of, you know, how many miles is it from Billing to Salt Lake? How many miles is it from Billing to, you know, Cheyenne, Denver, Gearing? I should have already probably had that already ran. But, um, you know, I think it went well. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think, uh, you know, just by the, you know, the good thing is, is he has extra tarps. So, uh, Tyra Kill, do you find it harder to gain relationships as one asset carrier as opposed to multi-asset? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, you know, to a certain extent, if if you're trying to build, let's well, let's colonize that question because this is an interesting question. If if I'm trying to go direct to a shipper, and I've got one asset, um, for me personally, you know, you're really trying to laser focus to make something work um, to, to the lane that works for you, right? Do I find it harder to gain that relationship as one asset? No, because I'm really being laser focused because it's interesting. I've called on a lot of shippers. I mean, a weird amount of shippers. And there's always this one carrier that kills this one lane. Mm -hmm. And what's funny about it is if you have some sort of personality, Brian, which you do, obviously, but if you have some kind of personality or if you're friendly or you're really good at communication, they always remember it yeah. and they'll never take you off. They're loyal. You just got to find that right shipper. Right um, now, when it comes to brokers, I, you know, there's so many owner operators that are out there. Um, there's so many, you know, small, small carriers that are out there. So you're not alone. You know, the only benefit that a broker offers is that they work with a multitude of carriers that have different sort of networks. So they can span anywhere and manage multiple loads, right? But at the end of the day, the shipper just wants each load delivered so that his customer knows that he cares about him, right. right? So if you focus on that, you focus on, hey, we've got we've got to get, you know, it's it's all about just that level of service. Ryan mm. kind of hits it on the head. Yeah, level right. of service really oversees. I'm totally into that, Ryan. Thank you for commenting on that. You know, your level of service, your personality that you bring, the the communication that you bring, there's always that one carrier. It's so funny. Every shipper I go into, there's always that one carrier where they're like, hey, you know, here's where we're at. Yeah. Um, build that trust. Oh, you got to build that trust yeah. and you just got to get it. Uh, there's a local cooperative here that brings in uh, a bunch of, of um, you know, watermelon. Uh, and then as they transition from watermelon, they transition into pumpkins. Yeah. And there is just one carrier that does all their hauling. Wow. And it's a single dude. Um, you know, it's a single guy. 
and he finds loads you know out on the load boards yep. and then he just essentially comes back it's kind of entertaining so wow. um so let's let's make one more call you know i think this one's a little bit more this is a direct shipper so we're going to call them um how i found this is if you want to go in and yep. just do a quick um how i found this guy was i was on ecare check i looked up the word denver so if you can just go in and just type in denver for shipper and i'll do that because i got the laptop and uh, let's look up shippers so what i'm looking at here is in our particular world because we have such a large database of right if i just look up the word denver pull up any shipper that i see that has the word denver in it right i could do that with anything rentals or energy or insurance or you know the activity i was talking about earlier. exactly yeah. potatoes onions right we can go down this road of crazy well he really is wanting to get in with this company um that's specifically a rebar company but i think they may be kind of big so as i was looking through here and i'm like well who who would they be so cmc rebar out of denver is who he's want, wanting me to reach out to uh, big carrier in fact in in our world we have you know seven bill of ladings we looked up cmc i bet they're even bigger than that um they ship obviously up and down. You see how we show the network that we've seen. They've had a lot of carriers that get out of service, which is kind of interesting, right? Um, they're using flatbed stretch, you know, stretch flat step decks. You can see, you know, it's a little bit in his network here. Um, and you can see obviously who some of those carriers are. And he's working with local carriers, Wyoming, Colorado, South Dakota, Colorado. And uh, this is kind of comes into Brian's question, you know, what are the chances of me getting into this company or a single carrier? And it's like, okay, look at these guys they are just smaller. Now, did they get it from a freight broker? There's a possibility. We'll find that out here soon, but we can also take you out to their site and figure out who to talk to. Um, you know, they're obviously a little bit bigger of a company. We're going to just call this number and see, do I need a, a, do I need to go through, you know, corporate, which you can see they're, they're a gigantic company, right? And there's a possibility that I do right industries they serve and you'll probably see seven yeah look at this i mean they're a worldwide company and boom i mean that's yeah, totally. i mean it's crazy our goal is to get into this company right here this little nugget not nothing down here but this is a huge company um you know if i push colorado it tells me those numbers we're going to call you know let's just see what happens when we call this location first and then we'll see you know do we have to get set up if we do then maybe we call um you know those uh, th those people that they actually try to tell us so let's call them see where this goes uh and then you know the day is this has gone so good uh, you yeah. know we'll probably end at, at this but uh yeah. let's let's make this call and see what happens and then we'll kind of chase it for a bit if we need to you can take it off or whatever you need to do here no we should be okay, okay. Thank you for calling CMC Rebar. Please leave your name, a brief message, and a callback number, and someone will get back with you as soon as yeah, possible. Let's go back to Thank that. you, and have a good day. After the tone. All right, so let's try another number here and see what we get. So 303-298-7822. Perfect. Another cool thing, too, you see they have a fax. Maybe you send a fax, too, to get creative. Why? <laughs> I love that. Hey, Rebar. You may interrupt this message at any time by pressing zero to speak with a live operator. For sales, please press one. For estimating, press two. For accounting, press three. For shipping, press four. You may also press pound for a dial by name direct. Let's just take the nice obvious day. one here and just do shipping just to see what. trucks it's okay at least we know that this is the main number you've reached cmc rebar please leave your name number and a brief message after the tone and the appropriate person will return your call thank you all right so let's see if we can actually get somebody on the phone 
So the old trick in my world is I always go through <laughs> accounting. Oh, we can just talk to an operator. Yeah, let's just talk to an operator. Let's try that first. Somebody's got maybe the operators loading trucks. They're all busy. <laughs> They're all busy. It's Friday. I get Bravo it. Bravo Gonzalez. Gabriella is currently unavailable. Oh, all right. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's go back. I'm telling you, accounting's the best. Yeah. Accounting's just sitting at their truck. There's their task. Hello. Thank you for right, calling CNC Rebar. We're trying again. You may interrupt this message at any time by pressing zero to speak with the live operator. For sales, please press one. For estimating, press two. Salespeople always answer the phone, too. Press three. For shipping, press four. All right. You may also press pound. We're going to county. We're going to county. <laughs> Boy, is nobody working? It's Friday. But nobody works over here. Must be a holiday we don't know about. I know, either. right? All right, so let's do it this way then. Johnson, Wendy is cut. Boy, nobody is answering. All right, so let's do it this way. We're going to actually go straight to the corporate office and see if we can actually get somebody to answer the phone um, and see if they can point us in the right direction. All right, so. We're gonna try this and see. Oh, I gotta dial a number right here. So it's 214-689-4300. Here we go. All right. I mean, they do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have multiple corporate offices, right? Hey, I was hoping you'd point me in the right direction. I'm uh carrier that's out in nebraska trying to haul for you guys and i'd like to see who i'd talk to specifically i'm trying to haul out of denver and i just want to see who i might talk to or if you could point me in the right direction thanks all right i'm on hold here we go at least we got, got somebody say, Jeez, yeah. louise we called four numbers Here we go. We need some more entertaining cold music. I know we do need dinner. <laughs> They're closed on Friday. They're closed up, yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, I saw Brian's question. Did the blue states show the shippers primary lanes? Not necessarily we do we see all of their lanes. There's a possibility if they had 10 shipments, e-carrier check probably has three to five of them. Okay. Um so we may not see their primary lanes, but we'll at least give you an idea of where we see their lanes at. That was the goal with those blue states there. That's a good question, Brian. <clears throat> you know, something I should have done. Oh, here we go. Let's see how it goes. All right, we're getting transferred, but hold music is still on, so I don't know. This is Rebecca. May I help you? Hey, Rebecca. This is Jared Ross with Twin City Cartage. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, I'm a carrier up in Nebraska that gets over to your Denver branch or Denver, Denver office, uh, you know, de that area quite often. And I was just want to see if I could possibly get set up with you as a carrier or get set up in some regards to, to haul for you. You said your name is Twin City? Yeah, Twin City Cartage. I can give you my MC if you'd like. Oh, sure. Doesn't appear that we do. What I would advise you to do is contact one of the CMC locations okay. that is close to you. Okay. And tell them what lanes you want to haul, you know, your equipment, all of that stuff, and see if they need to use your services. Okay. And then... And so, then I need you to send them your W-9 
operating authority and proof of insurance. Okay. And they will email me a request to have you set up. So just uh, got to work with a local branch, essentially, or get interest from a local branch, and then you could set me up, Rebecca? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, Rebecca, from your website, obviously, I see just a, a crazy amount of locations. Obviously, you're a fairly large company. I'm, you know, somewhat of a smaller carrier, but I, I definitely think I could help in a couple locations. Do they... Do the local branches sort of control the freight? Like, do they send out their loads every day to carriers, or how does that work? Do every from... location, yes, every location does their own shipping. They do. Okay. Um, that's why I say just reach out to somebody that's close to you. Okay. Or somebody that you know is in the area where you want to haul. Okay. Because every location does their own transportation. Nice. And then do we do our billing through you or does it get billed uh, like third party or something? Or how does that work? Well, it just depends. Are you a flatbed hauler? Yeah, we, we've got uh, we've got okay. six flatbeds um, with tarps and we're in like you've got uh, Denver locations and you got Salt Lake and we're we kind of work that that's that's kind of our that's right where we like to go. You know what I mean? It's just simple lane. It's nice. I know that doesn't really meet all of your needs all over the country but you know we're just wanting to uh help where we can you know sure so um i would just say again reach out to one of the locations as far as billing is concerned we have an automatic billing system so you won't need to send invoices in um, we ask that you do retain all paperwork in case there's any discrepancies and a customer asks for a bill of lading or something like that. Sure, sure. Um, would you have would you have a good point of contact at either location by chance, Rebecca? I know I'm asking a lot of you. I just appreciate your help. Oh, no, it's fine. I honestly, I don't know a lot of the people in the areas that you're talking about. But... Um, would they know you if I if I call and talk to George yeah. in Denver and I say, hey, George, I need you to send an email to Rebecca. Would they know you then? Yes. My last name is Swayze. And you can just ask them to send me the paperwork along with their request. Okay. Perfect. So just the W-9 insurance. Is there any insurance levels that you need or if I've got, you know, standard sort of insurance certificate? I got two. Yeah, I just want to see what you have right now. Proof of insurance. Sure. We'll get a revised certificate after the contract is okay. signed. And, you know, from my standpoint, Ed, is there any, you know, you mentioned you've got automatic invoicing. Do you, do you pay in a fairly quick manner or how do you pay normally? Contractually, it's 45 days. Okay. Uh, we do have other options that are available. Okay up to seven days uh that includes a two percent discount okay so i can get paid just a little bit quicker and, and away we go okay, okay. um awesome well uh, rebecca you've been a great help um would you mind if i grab your number just to, so i can call you back if i have any other questions sure it's eight three zero three seven two seven three eight four two awesome Rebecca, you're full of great information for a Friday morning. I really appreciate your help. <laughs> no problem. All right. You have a good weekend, okay? All right. You All right. too. Thank Take you. Take care. Okay. I think you might have made her day. She was, oh, very, yeah. she was nice. Yeah. We, that, was a, that was a good one. Yeah. I, I really feel like, um, you know, with that one, we could, well, we could definitely, you know, that one's simple. Because now all we're doing is just calling back Denver. We're right. calling back Salt Lake. You know, the 45-day pay is kind of... <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what shippers are thinking. It's like, we've got gobs of costs. You know, diesel is, you know, just went under five bucks in, in Nebraska. Right. I'm sure in Colorado or, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, okay. I mean, the good thing is, is here's a couple things that I can reference here. We got our direct number. You know, we found out how much our billing is, mm -hmm. right? Um, or how, how quick they pay their bills. Yeah. Uh, we know what we need to provide them, W9, authority and insurance. Um you know, I feel like a couple more calls and we could probably get them go, hey, yeah, actually, I have a need for carriers between Salt Lake and Denver. Yeah. 
and to add you had asked some really good questions and you know for someone that just getting into the industry like this you know you may not know to ask all those questions Ooh, so yeah. write those down mm. put them by your darn phone i know and you know those are very good questions thank you i appreciate yeah. that i appreciate yeah. that um you know we have to run for today and i love that everybody's on i loved all the questions today it was incredible oh, yeah. um nate real quick before we wrap up you know how do people get in touch with us how do how do we get involved in people's lives to help them grow yeah definitely uh, and i see we just had a jeezy can you guys do a call to a shipper flat but a regular van so we just did one yep that um, was a regular flat yeah van. you probably just missed it jeezy uh, i love that name by the way i did too so just watch this video again and you'll get to see it but um, and you can reach out to us, Jeezy. Um, if you go to ecarriagecheck.com, um, for everyone watching, you'll see our phone number, email, get in contact with us. We do demos three times a week, uh, Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then every Wednesday we have a Q&A and just our community gets together and you can be able to learn from people that are in your shoes. So really good opportunity to get in our community and learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Nate, I loved it. Today was awesome. You guys had some incredible questions. Yep. We'll see you back here next Friday. Yeah. Uh, keep trucking and uh, thanks for checking in on eCarrier Check. Thanks, Take care. Everyone.